So, greetings, ladies and gentle players. It's the day that this might have been uploaded. In which case, poggers. Or it's not going to be uploaded. In which case, this intro is useless. Either way, looking over a game here today, randomly. I'm not sure why I felt like going over a game today. I kind of think maybe it's because I'm pretty certain I found the bloodiest game in 2022. Uh, which means this one is not it. So let's go ahead and show it to you. Let's go ahead and show it to you. Like, oof. Oh, man. I knew last year when I found the bloodiest game of 2021 that no one was ever beating it for the rest of that year. There was no way it was ever happening. And I've already found it for 2022, which sucks because now I've got months and months and months to wait. No, it's not bold. It's not bold. If you saw how much death was, it's, there's no way. It's not being topped. Only way you're topping that is with like literally every stone on the board dead. And I don't think you're finding that in a pro game. So yeah, I'm calling my shot. But yeah, now gotta wait for the rest of the year. Gotta wait till December to find out what game I'm referring to. Man, that really sucks for you guys. Oof. That really sucks. But it's quite okay, because I do come bearing gifts. A nice bloody game between this 9-dan professional and this 8-dan professional. So that is A-OK. -okay. You. Up a little bit more. Thank you. So, yeah, this game starts off, as many games often do, with a 3-4, denying the cross-opening. Okay, Double 3-4. Interesting. So we're anticipating a uh, more of a territory game, potentially, for Black, because we've got three uh, third line stone and third line stone. So, yeah, okay. Now... Now things just got real. 3-4 stone facing black. I've said it's a specialty move. I will continue to say it's a specialty move. I will not stop saying it is a specialty move. Because usually, when is the opponent plays here, local responses tend to suck. And you often have your opponent going and playing somewhere else. Why do local responses often suck? Eh, well, uh, here's, a, here's a few reasons why. Like, hypothetically, you pincer or something. Okay, I finally pincered. And, I don't know, maybe we get leaned upon... Like so, and then uh, counterattack. Like, we're not really making points. Black's expanding, attacking whole bunch of really weird stuff. No matter, like, how you play it, that's pretty much what you're looking at. Uh, unless you play, like, a really, really passive move. Which point, your opponent could, like, take an enclosure. You could keep doing something over in here. But you know that stone's just fine, so it's like, well, this is okay, and then there's two corners here. Like, what, what, what's white doing? We don't even know. So it usually takes a... Uh, very good knowledge of Jiseki and what have you to uh, play this move. Enclosure here is interesting. The back off for black just got really, really, really big. That also got really, really, really big. Because we can imagine now black following up. And suddenly we've got enclosures, extensions, we've got walls that we can build upon. We've got walls we can continue to build upon later, you know? They just, like, keep building up the right. It's a pretty good development. So, okay, we can understand good old professional 8-Don boy over here going, I'm taking your largest moves there, sir. But Black, hoo, 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 he knows where the largest moves are. Oh, yes, he does. He looks at his board and says, I got me an enclosure. I got me a threefold point. Got me that approach of denying you your enclosure. So I know what's next. And all of you do as well. You know. 
You know what it is. Black's next move. The 3-3! Three, three. Of course the 3-3. Three, three. How could it be anything other than the 3-3, three, three, I ask you? Now, choosing a direction to block here, again, has everything to do with, like, continuations and uh, ease of variations that you feel like playing. And there's not really a wrong answer here. White chose to play this way. Interesting. Why did white choose to play that way? Well, because he wanted to play this Draseki, so he plays this way. He knows the sequences that he's making. His opponent goes here, and he plays this one. This sequence is why he played this way. So, Blish, Bash, Bosh, Skadoosh. Jiseki here is as Jiseki normally is. Black's now coming out. White's getting to the bottom over here. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And uh, yeah, nice, simple, easy variation. Fantabulous. Uh, there is one teeny tiny thing. Get my pen tool out. So I can more readily draw on the board, because my pen tool is superior to the OGS pen tool. Sorry, it is. Deal with it. Uh, so there's a few things here that are uncomfortable, let's say. If white gets to follow up here, it's pretty nasty. Because that Hane is also pretty nasty. Kind of gets rid of the eye here, and then this is getting, getting really, really scrunched. Um... So you're probably looking at, like, the stone over in here. You probably want to follow it up because you've got Sente now for black. But you have to be careful of your Sente because this is usually, like, a forcing move and it kind of gets awkward. So rather than just, like, do that, we're going to keep in mind that we could also, rather than just sit back and be attacked, we could also expand in this direction by taking... Our opponent's big move away from him, thus creating a nice strong group that we can kind of expand off of in the sentes. And there's some like follow ups here later on, too. So fantastic. White plays the pincer. You might be asking, why is white playing the pincer? Shouldn't white be getting a base right now? You could do that as well. But you get a base, and then like your opponent gets a base, and you got the enclosure with the extension kind of rocking here. A little bit awkward. No reason to give your opponent an enclosure and extension, because what do we have here? We have an approach onto the 3-4 stone that hasn't been answered yet. So we're not really in like a huge rush to follow up here again, when we can take a really, really big move off the board from our opponent. Now, I was just playing a game where I felt my opponent was playing moves too early. Is this a large follow-up? Absolutely. Is it the largest move on the board right now? Um. I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, yeah, I get it. The 3-3-er. Three, three dealing with that influence. Getting more of them points. These things make sense. Playing the big follow-up. Okay. But... I don't know. What what did we do here? Like, we killed three stones, kind of solidifying the wall, and we can still be forced to, like, go off and kill that later on. Feels a little weird timing. Feels a little weird, champ. Notice how, though, notice, 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 though, the life of the 3-3 three -three is not an enviable one. Because Black does feel that he is in a uh, position where he has to keep reducing, not following up on the left or taking more territory on the right. 
is very, very aware that the influence he's given away by the nature of being a 3 3 is not to be underestimated. And we've actually learned that quite well as well in the YKPCX game that I do believe I put on Patreon uh, last month, where we saw Fanting You, top 15 world, take two stones from a AI, and just got ripped to pieces because the AI got more influence from these territorial exchanges and then hung him with it. So influence you definitely gotta respect it's it's a huge thing right now and this is also a huge thing right now this is like lots and lots and lots of potential uh for white to grow black doesn't really have the same amount of potential right now that's the nature of trading influence for territory influence is you know potential no, no big surprise there. So he really wants to, you know, get, get a handle on this before it gets out of control. So how will White respond to these ideas? Well, first and foremost, hurt the base. We're not going to do this, right? We're getting two space extension and then maybe even a full-on base here. Too soft, way too soft. Very important to do a little push, push, pushy. Draws back. And then maintains some pressure because the bottom is bigly. Now, I do not know. I do not know what the AI would say here. All right. Before you see it, who do you suppose is currently ahead right now? Do you think the AI prefers black or white? Who do you think who do you think's ahead right now? Black, white, white? Really? You're thinking white, huh? Should we basically even? Should we basically even? Okay, okay, okay. Blacks ahead, blacks ahead, blacks ahead. People who are voting black! You're wrong. It actually likes white. Actually likes white. Believe it or not, it likes white by the tune of frack. Where is it? Um, 53.5. It's, it's pretty much even, but it's a little bit more in white's favor still. So you got to be careful. Like, this is what I've been saying all year, right? The 3-3 three, three is an even result. It's not a I am now significantly ahead result, right? And sure enough, this is all being cut out of the thing, by the way. Or it's not. I don't know. I'll figure it out tomorrow. And it did take a little bit of a dive for black by 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 doing like the thing too early. So it is basically even. It's basically even. But yeah, influence is still okay. This is a fine result. Just so you know, right now, Black is doing all of this to stay even in the game. Okay, so now the game gets a little bit more complicated because Black wants to get an advantage. Doesn't want to just, you know, play uh, solid, be alive. Wants to, you know, be a bit more spicy. So he plays a essay move. <clears throat> and he goes for a surround. But well, isn't that a weird move? Like, gap. Right? They're like a big honking hole here. But it does stand to have reward. Because he's now trying to expand his area, right? He's like, this is me. And we've got like two little eyes here. This is me. And this is me. And you might be invading here later. But for now on, this is what I'm trying to build. Right? This, this, is, this is what I'm trying to build. So, okay. Okay, we'll see how that works out for him. White's next move, everybody knows it, right? 
White's next move. It's local. Where's it going to be? It's going to be local. I'll give you a hint. It's one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves that I'm hovering on right now. R9. Oh, I mean Q9. Uh, an interesting suggestion. But there is a proverb. I'll, let, let's 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 help uh, Jesserek out immediately. Are you familiar with proverbs, Jesserek? Do you have a fair understanding? Some of the more common ones, maybe. Some of the more more common ones. Because if you know some of the more common proverbs, then you know which one this breaches, and why we're not going to play it. P10 then. Yes. What proverb does this breach? Do we know? Because yes, this is absolutamente copinero. Don't push from behind. Exactly. We could do this. But it's it's just kind of helping our opponent, hey? Like, why are we pushing our opponent in the middle of the board right now? That's weird, yo. So yeah, we're not going to do that. As long as we can avoid not doing it. Like, obviously, that proverb goes out the window if, for whatever reason, this just didn't work. Right? Like, if this just didn't work, then, you know, you do the thing that works. But right now, yeah, it can't cut through because double atriari, and we can't cut through here because uh, single atriari. So, yeah. Okay, now they can do the push and cut. So now we're we're getting into um a little bit of a uh what is it what is it what is it? We're getting into a little bit of a uh, reading battle. This move, mm, love it so so much. You might be asking yourself, but can't he still cut? Can't he still cut? Push, cut Atari down. Two dead stones. Two dead stones. So why would we play here if two of our stones are going to die? It's going to make me feel awfully faint. Again, that's where we're getting into a reading battle again. Black plays here. But if your first instinct is to do this one, you have fracked up big time. Because you can see what's going on here, right? Easy. Easy McPeasy pants. Everybody can follow along. You push and cut those two stones, what do you get? Two stones. And you're strengthening your opponent like a crazy person. One must beware. So, okay. Okay, we can follow along. See, this is where a little bit of the reading comes in. And where if you're a greedy opponent, this is usually what holds you back in your games. Because you don't want to give up anything, right? So you're not going to contemplate moves like this. It just sack the two stones for like an ungodly amount of something else. Now, the flip side of that, when you start getting used to doing things like that, is you're going to do it a little bit too often. You have to, like, find, like, the nice middle ground. I know in a lot of my games, I'm a little bit too willing to sacrifice sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's just two stones. Then, ah, just just two stones. Like, over there, too? Just two stones. Uh, over here? Ah, just two stones. Wait, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. I just gave away 20 points. Like, you have to make sure you're not going crazy with it. Like, but yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty good thing to be aware of. Okay, play here. What, uh, you think we know about... So here, creating cutting point. Creating cutting points. Going for the thing. Now here you can see what he wants to do, right? 
we can see this variation. Black wants these two points, it settles him, it gives him more territory. However, the wall is too solid. So our plans are starting to evolve. So what does he do? He creates a cutting point, and a cutting point, and a cutting point. So he wants to do this. He's sticking with it. He is going to be doing the cutty times, because now the ladder doesn't work. Things are evolving. Things are evolving indeed. But it does bear keeping in mind white on the 10th line. So if he gets a move like over in here or whatever, like that little bot, that little dude, then this could be 10, 20, 30, 40. 50 points. Plus, like, whatever this is, uh, like, 60 points. Plus Comey, like, 66 points. That's a lot of points! That's, that's, that's a lot of points. But it's okay. Because they're not solid points yet. Now, here's an interesting thing, because, like, we're thinking about moves to, like, continue in growifying the middle. But first, we want to see where forcing moves are. So, I like this. It's a little pro. It's like, hey, buddy, what's up? Territory's mine, says Black. It's like, uh, I'm sorry, did you say I could live in the corner? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, okay. So we could go here, here, and to here. Probe, useful. How about here? Gotta kill that. Okay, okay, okay. So now there's a life in the corner, but there's an Atari here as well. Intriguing. Intriguing indeed. But what if I were to tell you? What if I were to tell you about to blow your minds? Are you ready to have your minds blown, chat? What if I were to tell you? White is a man of culture and principle. White says, I see that I can live in Gote in your corner, but that doesn't help my greater ambitions of developing the middle. So what does he do? G8? Nyet. Threatening to kill... Atari into the... Pretty good. Pretty good. It's like, I'm going to take all this from you. And kill you. What about that? While he's continuing to grow the outside. Corner reobtained for black. Forcing sacrifices. Done. Those two stones, done. End of forcing moves. Time to bail to the next influential play. Some people say influence play is dead. The bleep bloops have shown us the one true path. And that is territory. But Kim apparently comes before us now. With an alternative. He says, you know. As long as you play solid, you know where your forcing moves are, you too can travel the universe. You can embrace the cosmos, if you will, with some lovely cosmic go. So here we go. Once again, forcing moves over. Next forcing moves. My, I have had an itch right above my, or below my eyebrow. It's kind of annoying me. So here we go again. Planning uh, more forcings. And more forcing moves. 
irrelevant. Continuing to extend out. Have you ever seen a middle this beautiful? It's amazing. Just look at it. Just look at it. When was the last time you dared to build something this huge in your games? When? When? I don't even remember. So, okay. Black is a professional name done. He sees this. He's like very, very, very scary. Not scared. Okay. Boom. He going in. All the time, I lose it every time. The reason why you probably lose it every time is because your attempts to play this way probably aren't as solid as good old Kim's are. Or as I talked about with Paige, like a couple of weeks back, once you have your opponent, your little little little. Once you have your opponent surrounded, maybe the moves that you play are a little bit too clingy. If you're playing this way, you can't be that clingy. So what do we do next? What do you think? What do you think? None of you are going to get it right. But I'm going to, I'm going to, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. What, what do you think next move is? Your opponent has just thrust himself inside your, um, uh, your, your Moya. What are we going to do next? And again, interesting. M8. You see? One eye dragon. One eye dragon. He knows. She's like, what is our opponent trying to do? Only way for him to really get a good result here is with the Hajish. But we don't want to give him the, the Aji, do we? No, 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 no. So we take the Aji from him. So instead of playing the tabley table, white takes that one out of it. Retreating, insta cap. And now we are committed. We are committed towards this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful endeavor of life. But before we talk about life, Let's hypothetically talk about something else. If white gets it, th just this. Just this. How much territory is this? We could still see up to 60 points with like a little turny thing, as long as we have the bottom. Does black have 60 points? Huh. I, I imagine so, right? Black must have 60 points. I hope so. Oh, snap. Oh, gee willikers. Oh, oh, fiddlesticks. It seems like black's not quite at the 60-point threshold yet, if we count conservatively. It depends on, you know, certain endgame sequences, obviously, what happens here. But because he has a weaker who's running around right now, we don't know what, if any, of those moves he's actually getting. So ain't that something? Ain't that something, chat? Ain't that something? Turns out, when you go for these little life sequences, you don't have a lot of points. That's why it becomes more and more important that you don't let your opponent develop with that influence that they have. Right? Because it becomes really, really tough when we're playing this way to really get the points we need for if our opponent gets a firm development anywhere on the board. So yeah, right now, he is absolutely playing an aggressive game. But he doesn't have to. 
and I find that fascinating. It's all right. Now we've got this into a push here. I, I, I don't even know how many more points of territory that would be. Which common are you referring to? Like, he knows that if his next opponent, if his next opponent's move was to play here, he'd kill him. For being greedy and not playing a shape, he'd kill him. Now, your opponents on Fox and OGS and wherever, they'd probably do this dumb stuff because we see it happen all day, like, day in and day out. And they'll just be like, I, I hope you don't kill me. But, but yeah, this, this will probably die because, like, there's, like, caps and, like, cuts and whatnot. Like, you don't even have to read. Reading isn't even involved here. He's, you, just, you just don't live anymore. Right? Yeah. But also, it's because he's profiting while this is going on. Like, the, the territory right now that's vanishing from white here is threatening to be remade up in here. Because remember, there's like a wall here. Got a wall here. We're getting a wall here. So if we extend it out here with a couple of sente moves, we can just kind of like end it like so. Not outside the realm of possibility, it got to say. Pokey, pokey, pokey times. Go in the honey. Uh huh. Connect solidly. Don't leave those cutty points behind. And now we're going in for those deeper invasions. Ending shape. Trying to make Sente move happen. Shapey points. You can see him uh, getting rid of like forcing moves and poking at the shapey times because this, not a living shape. Looking for more forcing moves is declined. That's kind of being very good on the reads because here into here and then here into here leads to no new eyes. No new eyes. Black's going a bit nuts here. Yeah, influence is tough. And he did go all in. Absolutely, 100%, he did go all in on trying to reduce. And it's absolutely not working out well for him, is it? Forcing. Now that move, I'm not sure if I'm brave enough to play. Getting rid of the Yaji there. Because now we're kind of pushing our opponent into the left-hand side. This is where I would officially start getting a little bit concerned for white. Forcing move. Starting to further reduce. Fixing that shape. Getting rid of all weaknesses. I like how solid white is playing. Honestly, can't complain. Fixing the eyes. It looks like black is perfect. Getting the forcing move in. Threatening to get some territory. It's good, good, good. Fixing the weaky points. Black is connecting because why not? I mean, we saw there's a lot of worth a lot of points if black if white cuts that off. But one thing you'll notice he's not doing, he's constantly just trying to reduce more and more and more. White says that was a mistake. Black says you're a mistake. Which I thought was rude of him to say. Looking for another eye. 
Not really finding one. Good move, though. Getting rid of eye potential here. Probably a time Suji. No eyes down here. Uh oh. Pokey, pokey, poke. Two ways to falsify. Uh oh. Tries to run. Is swallowed. This is pretty solid. So hammers down. Make sure you can't run away. Don't create cutting points. Nicely dead two stones. Almost got an eye. It's good. It's good. It's go Tay, but it's good. We're getting there. You know? Forcing move. Is what you would normally think, but if the Atari into the connect or into the connect into the connect goes into a thing, right? And then we can't push and cut because Atari into death. So not actually Sente, which means you've just lost an eye. Gets cut off. Life in the corner. That one is interesting, threatening the co. But now he just lost his other eye. Because they can go back and back and connect. So this is not a problem. So he's only got the one eye right now. Lost them all. Doesn't have a single bloody one made. So he resigns. Oops, he's dead. Oops. 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 Oh, darn. Darn, rats. He dead. Bye bye, Black. Tried to play all territorial. White went. White went all cosmic. Nope. So, yeah, that. That was just a game that makes everybody happy, you know? White was pretty much in control of it for most of it. And showed that influence is uh, not as overrated as some people would have you believe it to be. So beware when you're throwing down that 3-3. The influence you're giving away might not be as good as you think it is. Gotta respect that influence. And to handle it properly, or it kills you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the game. This might get uploaded somewhere at some point. And if it was, awesome.